In the previous step, we devised our understanding of what's happening in the background. In this step, we would want to write a simple unit test. So we defined a simple method to be able to find a course in the course repository. It's just a very simple method, but we would want to be able to write a unit test to this and check whether it's working fine. So that's what we would be focusing on in this step. One of the things which we missed doing in the previous step was to look at the H2 console in the application properties. We turned statistics on, we looked at them. We turned queries on, we looked at them. We enabled H2 console on, but we didn't look at it yet. So let's get to the H2 console now. Go to the browser and type in localhost 8080 slash H2 console. So this is a URL, localhost 8080 slash H2 console. Just go in there. You can see the values which you need to populate on your screen right now. So your driver class is org H2 driver. Your JDBC URL this is the one thing which you need to notice in detail. It should be JDBC colon H2 colon mem colon testdb. The username is SA and password is empty. And you can say connect. Once you do a connect, you'll be able to see the course table which is present in here. This is what is called H2 console. Once you select a table and run, you can see the data which is present in here. For now, it's a very simple table, right? We have an ID, a name, but this console we would be using extensively through this course. This is not just select queries. If you want to insert data or delete data and things like that, you can do that from here as well. So this is very similar to your database client. If you're using Oracle, for example, you might be using something like SQL Developer or Tor. This is exactly the same, except for the fact that this is online. So this is a web browser kind of a thing. This is available as long as your application is available. So as long as your application is running, you have all the tables and the database available for you. When the application goes down, the H2 console also goes down along with it. Now, let's shift our attention to whatever we wanted to do in this step, which is to create a unit test for our course repository method. What we'll do is we'll create a class called course repository test and call this find by ID and see if the course which is written back has the name that we wanted. The most important thing that you need to understand is the fact that your test code should be separate from your source code. So this is your production code. So the source main Java is your production code. Source main Java resources is your production configuration. The source inside source Java will not be part of your production deployable. This is more to unit test your code. How do I create a unit test? What I'll do is I'll start with copying demo applications test. So I'll copy demo applications test and paste it out. And I would rename this as course repository test. The first thing I would do is also change the package name. So package name, we should match the package name of the class that is being tested. We want to test course repositories. The course repositories in the package dot repository. So dot repository. That is the package where I would want to put this. Control one, command one, move. Now we are inside that package. So course repository test. That's cool. If you see this specific test, the most important thing are the two annotations at the top. I'd want to launch a spring context in my unit test. In these kind of situations, we use something called at run with spring runner dot class. So at run with spring runner dot class is used to launch a spring context. The spring context that we would want to launch is a spring boot test. So we would want to launch the entire Spring Boot context, which is present in here. We would want to launch the entire demo application context, which would we have in here. So that's at Spring Boot test. Over here, I can even explicitly specify the Spring Boot context file that I would want to launch. I can say classes is equal to demo application dot class. What I would want to launch is this demo application dot class. This is the one which contains Spring Boot application. This is the context that I would want to launch. And I'm specifying that by saying classes is equal to demo application dot class. What this would do is it would launch up the entire context. So if I do a right click, run as JUnit test, it would launch the entire context. And because this is a unit test, immediately it will kindle the context as well. What would happen is first it is launching the Spring Boot context. So it launches the Spring Boot context. We have seen what are the things that would happen at the launch of the context, right? So the first thing is we hibernate creates the tables for us because it's enabled by Spring Boot configuration. Then it would run the data SQL files that would create the data that we would need. It would fire the query also like 
the application class also has is a runner so if we look at the application class this also runs the query which is present in here so it runs the query and then what it would do is it would run whatever code that we write in the test in the example we don't have any code in the test so you can see that course repository test is being run in here we don't really have anything in the test right now so nothing will happen because of the test and then the tables would be dropped and the whole context would be killed so what would happen when i launch the test is the context is launched and the context is killed for example let's say i would want to log something in here i'll go to the demo application and copy the logger stuff so that i will be able to log things in here i copied the logger out what i would do is logger dot info i'll say test is running context loads run the unit test right click run as j unit test or you can select it from here you would see that the whole thing happens again the tables are created data is populated the query is run and as soon as the query is run the context is launched then what would happen is your test gets fired you can see here testing is running testing is running what do i mean I actually wanted to type in test is running but it does not really matter you can see that the uh, whatever is in there is being printed in here and once the test runs it would actually drop the entire schema the sequence of events is very simple the context gets launched the test runs and the context gets killed what we want to do here is we would want to test the course repository so what we want to test is course repository and repository let's create an instance for it in here i'll say this is going to be auto wired and let's organize imports control shift o command shift o and now in the test i can call whatever i would want to call so repository dot find by id and i would want to pass in a id of 1001 and i would get the course back assign statement to new local variable course is equal to this that's cool right now i can write a assert on the course so i can say assert equals what's the name of the course dot course dot get name what should be the name of the course where do i get it from i can go to the data dot sql whatever name you have put it in here should be the name which should come back so i'll do that oops let's get here and put it in and i'll do a control one command one and add a static import for that as well so now you'd see that i'm asserting one of the things with assert equals the left side is the expected value and this is the actual value try and make sure that this is added to when you add to this the junit messages which come up would be much much more helpful this is no longer testing a context load this is testing what this is testing the find by id method so i'll just call this find by id basic test case to say that this is the most basic test case for the find by id method and now i can do a right click run as junit test table is created what does the test do the test also fires the query again so the test fires the query again you can see that the course repository test is in here the course repository test fires the query because we are calling the repository method to find by id what is the id that is being passed 10001 you can see that the session metrics are being printed and the entire thing comes out i would recommend you to play around with this unit test so you can change this to jpn 10, 50 steps let's say i would want to change let's say i'll say jpn 100 steps what would happen try and play around with it this test would fail obviously because the name that comes from your database is jpa in 50 steps however i'm saying i'm expecting jpa in 100 steps so you'd see that the test would fail you'd see that it says okay JUnit comparison failure i'm expecting jpa in 100 steps but it was jpa in 50 steps JUnit also is also very helpful it's saying what's the difference inside the inside the brackets is 10 and 5 it's saying this 10 here it's 10 here it's 5 that's the difference so this is where JUnit is really helpful it would be able to automatically find out any flaws in your code so if this find by id is getting a wrong id back or a wrong course back then we'd be able to easily find it out because these JUnits would be running in continuous integration this would be running as part of your build server and whenever there's a bug in your code this would easily find it out so let's fix this let's go back to jpa in 50 steps if you run this you'd see that the test would succeed 
if this is the first time you're writing unit tests, there are a lot of things that you might be learning for the first time. What I would recommend you to do is to try and play around with this unit test again and again. Try and write a simple unit test, a couple of more unit tests around this scenario. Maybe populate some data in here. So you can populate a new course in here and try and play around with it and see what would happen. One of the things that we really believe at in 28 minutes is the best time to learn is when you have something working. So you have a unit test working, you have a repository, you have an entity. Now you can play around with it. Take a backup, try and play around, break it, and that's the best way to learn. Until next step, bye-bye.